Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. This is Inger, your host, and I have with me Elmo with his political insight and commentary. How are you doing today, Elmo? I'm doing well, Inger. I hope that you're doing good. Yeah, yeah, hanging in there. <laughs> hope everyone else is doing well as well. We have a full show today. A few things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about Kamala Harris as the running mate pick for Biden. And talk about Kanye West being qualified to be president. And we're going to hit on Trump's economy and a couple of things that, that he's done to help the country and to boost the economy since he's been in office. Okay. Great, great. Well, let's yeah. jump right in. Okay. So this uh, something that I just heard a couple of days ago, this debate between uh, Fauci and I believe is Jordan in Congress, just talking about protesting and the the close proximity of people and the the danger in that so he's being asked questions by him and they're they're going back and forth so let's listen to this commentary this is from cnn you and i recognize this for five minutes mr jordan thank you mr chairman dr fauci do protests increase the spread of the virus do protests increase the spread of the virus uh, I think I can make a general statement. Well, half a million protesters on June 6th alone. Yeah. I'm just asking that number of no. people. Does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean. Should How do we say limit the protesting? Should the government limit the protesting? I, I, I don't think that's relevant to... Well, you just said if it increases the spread of the virus, I'm just asking, should we limit it? Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, and everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking, you just said it, yeah. that protests increase the spread. No. I'm just asking, you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. I can tell you. Government stopping people from going to church, Dr. Fauci? Yeah. Last week in the Calvary Chapel case, five liberals on the Supreme Court said it was okay for Nevada to limit church services. Governor, I, I mean, Justice Gorsuch said it best. He said, there's no, there's no world in which the Constitution permits Nevada to favor Caesar's palace over Calvary Chapel. I'm just asking, is there a world where the Constitution says you can favor one First Amendment liberty protesting right. over another practicing your faith? I'm not favoring anybody over anybody. I'm just making a statement that's a broad statement that avoid crowds of any type, no matter where you are, because that leads to the acquisition and transmission. Okay. All right. And I'll cut it there. I, uh, I, I felt like Fauci was trying to not be political or for him to answer that, that he felt like he was getting into politics and that it may come, come back on him in some kind of a negative way. I'm disappointed in the way that he answered that and, and his answer. And I got to go with the side with Jordan on this. People come together. People want to come together at church. And there are some churches or some states where they're, they're not they're not letting them do that. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, in, in the in the Constitution, a right to a peaceful assembly. We have that. I think that's in the same amendment with freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. So a, a violent protest is not a peaceful assembly. So it's like when you start being violent or engaging in vandalism, now, now you, you have the right. You have the right to come together and do it. And so uh, people are, are listening to him and following him, and I'm one of those people. And that was a good time for uh, – Fauci to say, look, when when I look at TV, like I don't even have to be there in person. When I see all these people coming together and so close, closer to any baseball game or football game, it makes my heart stop. 
because I, I know that it's impossible for that to happen. Or he could speak on or speculate what he thinks is the likelihood of there being infected people in that crowd. I tell you this, I believe that most of the asymptomatic people are young people, are people under the age of 30 or under the age of 25 that have it and don't have any symptoms or don't know that they have it, which are most of the protesters, (laughs) people in their 20s. That's true. That's very true. It was interesting, too, that he said, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, what is it, to violently stop protests? I think that's what he said. And that just caught me. I'm like, why, you know, if people are protesting, and I'll go back to the example that um, Atlanta had when all of this first got underway, Uh prior to them vandalizing the CNN Center, they were just walking down the street and they were having, they were wearing masks and they were just walking down the street. That was peaceful. So why, um, I don't, it's just bothered me that he said violently breaking up protests. It's like the police are there just like they were when, you know, when all of this first happened in Atlanta prior to the yeah. CNN Center, the police were there and they were just there just to stand there to make sure everything was going okay. So the police aren't going to start out and just go in on people, obviously. So why does he, well, I don't understand why he didn't call some of the protests that were violent, violent, but yeah. he accused the federal government that they would violently break up protests. That was, that was a kind of, that was interesting. I don't know why he went there. And See, you can't, you can't stop violence by quelling people or lulling them to sleep Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta use violence to stop violence the police have to unless they they stand back and instead of tear tear gas they use sleeping gas you know Mm -hmm. let's stand back 100 feet and and shoot some sleeping gas balls at people (laughs) and then they'll just uh lay down on the street and then we'll get one big stretcher and just throw the people on and carry them off somewhere. When they wake up, they'll be behind bars. (laughs) So um, uh, police stopping violence, there's no way for you to do that without, without being violent. There's a, um, there's a line between violence and excessive force. Use the force that you have to. I, I give police the right and permission to take things to the very next level when it comes to violence and stopping it. Not jump in two or three levels, but you want to be one up on, you know, to, to just control the situation. And just like self-defense, when, when someone or when a country or whoever is engaged in self-defense, people who they're defending themselves against may get hurt because you have to beat them back. So it's just, it's a part of it. They're, they're in that fight. You can't put two sides in a game and say, okay, for this side, the rules are different. Right. Right. They have to use, they, they have to, the same rules for everybody. Um, yeah. Also, you know, he didn't want to go in about the churches. You know, folks are yeah. going to church. They're six feet apart. They're wearing masks, you know, but he just kept dodging that. <laughs> and Jordan even mentioned dating. Like he said, when it's just one man and one woman and they're together on a, on a date. So I guess he said something about you need to keep your distance then. And he said, look, you're, you're, you're commenting and talking about everything else. Yeah. And he, he posed a question to him in, in a good way, which was, was not saying that he was for, for or against I mean, law enforcement is supposed to be waiting in the wings. Mm-hmm. Their police are patrolling. Actually, the word patrol is another word for police. Mm-hmm. To police or cruise around and to be available. Mm-hmm. They, they, should never, they should never start it. Though, but they got to be prepared in case the other side does. Right. And so since the last episode... Uh, Biden has chosen Kamala Harris as 
his running mate, probably the latest in any election or election year that someone chose, you know, who would be vice president. Mm -hmm. Going back as far as I can remember, as far as I know. Yeah. It's just amazing how during the primaries, the Democrat primaries, that she was attacking him for oh, yeah. being racist and saying all these things about him. And now they're best friends. It's like, <laughs> it, you know, it just doesn't jive. It doesn't, it doesn't click. Um, you know, and he, he has dementia. Obviously he does. So she is literally one heartbeat away from the presidency. So my question is her motives. Is she, clearly she doesn't care a thing about him because if she did, she wouldn't have gone after him and they wouldn't have gone after each other like they did in the primaries. Um, mm. But but now she, I think it's all about power. I think it's just all about power and the potential for power that is, um, that's driving her, but I don't know. I'm just assuming those are her motives, but I don't know if they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, I'm getting a lot of signals from this. One thing about that, I believe it's a concerted effort. And without Biden being out of the room, I believe that he's part of it. I mm -hmm. believe that he, he got further than anybody else in the party. And that he regretted it once he started. He even made a comment he, uh, about... I need whoever's my running mate, they need to be able to take over at any minute because I'm getting older and I may not make it or be able to go very long. And then the people, the reporter started laughing. He said, no, I'm serious. Wow. <laughs> you know, so I believe that the whole party, they said, look, we, we want to have somebody who we, we don't, we don't believe that Biden could make it if he becomes president that he can't make it through the first term that he would have to step down. OK, forget the 25th Amendment where you have a president removed because they're not able to function. He may volunteer or the Democrats may may tell him. I, I believe they will be in agreement that in, in two years or less that he would have to step down. And then by default, she would become the president. And then. When the next election comes around, she would already be the incumbent. Right. And she's somebody that's younger, a minority, someone she just as far as being in control of her faculties and being sharp, mm -hmm. uh, whether, whether you agree with what she says or not. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. Why do you think Biden chose Kamala instead of Stacey Abrams? That is a good question. Um, I think Kamala has a higher profile than Stacy. Stacy, and I don't know her personally. I don't know that she's necessarily. Um, I guess maybe she's likable. I, I just mm. don't get from her warm and fuzzy and. <laughs> Her. You're getting warm. You're getting warm. <laughs> now, I think the key word was likable. I believe that Biden picked her uh, for the men, for likability. Yep. And and the, look, I mean, mm. they're the party of identity politics. Mm -hmm. And you can't have identity politics without judging people on how they look. So That's we're, true. you know, putting their qualifications we can have a conversation about that if somebody wants to tell me what they're qualified and what the person believes in. I'm just telling you, you hold Abrams up next to Harris mm -hmm. side by side, and they're both just as far left and both capable of, of doing the job uh -huh. or working with people or having experience or whatever. I'm telling you that this is because she's, look, Abrams is a big girl. And she got short hair and she got a gap between her teeth. And why am I mentioning this? Because that's what they do. That's what they look at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it was a factor with Obama. If, if Obama had run against Herman Cain, most black people, regardless of the party. Well, I don't know about that. There's a strong allegiance to the Democrat Party. But I'm saying just if they were, if they felt like they were even or they were going along the same road or believed in the same thing, Obama would have won because he's a more handsome man. Right, yeah. 
than Herman Cain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when, when I look at this, I think about um, in the media and the media understands in the entertainment that people read from left to right. Yeah. And that's why when you see the movie posters, you see the star or the most attractive person is usually on the left side of the of the picture. OK, right. you think about the poster for hidden figures about the black women at NASA in the 60s. Mm -hmm. OK, Janelle Monet was on the left. In the middle is Taraji Henson. And on the right is Oct Octavia Spencer. Mm -hmm. Stacey Abrams is Octavia Spencer. <laughs> Janelle Monet is Kamala Harris. And I guess Susan Rice is uh, Taraji yeah. Henson, you know, she would, because <laughs> they were talking about Rice right up until they announced that Harris was picked. They, they sure were, but you're absolutely right, because um, folks talk, say it all the time, but, you know, does he look presidential? You know, yeah. that sort of thing. The person has to look the part. Yeah. And, um, and that goes for women, since they're in, in that arena, too probably goes for women as, re as well. And not oh, yeah. so much um, does she look the part is, I guess, kind of like you were saying, who's the most attractive, I guess, and or who would find the, who would find, which people would find which one most attractive, I guess. You know, right. that's thing. So that's, yeah. yeah. That, hmm. That's a part of it. And another part of that identity or the way that someone looks um, like we know that Obama is biracial. I don't, I don't think that that would have mattered. I think they were considering him, uh, a black person for the most part. Yeah. Harris is one of her parents black. The other is Indian. So yeah. Biden might've been thinking, well, if I pick her instead of Abrams, I can get the black vote and the Indian vote. Maybe so. Cause there are a lot of Indians in America and we we just talking about one generation for her uh, from. Yeah, I mean, like her, her, let's see, her, um, her mother, like born in India, uh, you know, immigrant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, they they look at all of that. Nice. And the, the other thing or the last thing I say about Harris is the first thing I saw come from her mm -hmm. after they made this announcement, you know, when when. Uh, she was on stage and her and Biden had their nice matching masks, you know, both black, <laughs> obviously, you know, made, made a, as, as a, as a couple. Mm -hmm. When, when a first, the very first thing I heard from her was Trump's Twitter account needs to be shut down. And I'm like, yep, this is, this is so true of the left. Try to take away someone's right to speak. Yeah. See, I don't want to silence people that disagree with me. I want them to say whatever they want to say. Number one, it's their right. Yes. And, and I, I'm telling you, look, uh, Trump said that Obama was incompetent. So if, if she goes after Trump and at some point they get into it, Trump, he doesn't care. He's going he's gonna to say exactly what, what he thinks of her. And it's, it's going to come out. And she, uh, you know, I, I can't see where she is. She's able to go back and forth like that with him. I mean, he's a, he's a debate smackdown and, a, you know, just off the top of his head, being able to say things. You, you remember the Republican debate with the other with the other nominees? He had a nickname for everybody. <laughs> he just, yes. <laughs> he, he will he will go right in. He will. He All will. right. And so think about this. If you can not know Twitter, Twitter is its own company. All right. Yeah. And we talk about the president of the United States. If you can shut down his Twitter account, what's to stop her from coming after you and me? Right. And censoring us. The other thing I'll say is over the next three months, over the next 90 days, you're going to see and hear from her more than you do Biden. He might be standing behind her, but they, they know that she's sharper, more coherent. And he, he is, I'm sorry, she is going to help him get somewhat more votes than if he had picked, you know, one of the other, one of the other contenders. 
And that's true. I think there were headlines somewhere. They raised $48 million in like 48 oh. hours or something to that effect. So yeah, oh, yeah. She, she's bringing <laughs> the cash. And I think you're right. Cause he's been hiding out all this time, basically. Basement he Joe. Say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dr. Do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Out front, and she will be um, pushing the ball uphill, and he's just going to come out when needed and when necessary, and they're probably prepping him for the debates. I would yeah. think, so I think that's going to come up relatively soon here, so, yeah. Yeah. Let's see if anyone from the media is going to ask her, hey, do you feel comfortable working with him and partnering with him, even with his sexual harassment allegations? Right. Have you, when the two of you were alone, did you ever ask him about that? If she says no, if she says no, because look, if I, if I heard about it sitting in a basement in Atlanta, I'm sure she's heard about it <laughs> and I would be working with you. Look, I mean, Biden, some of these accusations were after the age of 70. So look, he's a confident old man. He's thinking, yeah, I got snow on the roof and fire in the furnace. <laughs> so, so don't look at his age and think that he he feels like I mean, you know, he's he's flirted with women 20, 30 years younger than him. If she says that she didn't even bring that up, <laughs> I'm telling you, what what is that gonna what is that gonna say about her except just I got I got the the White House in my crosshairs. That's the focus. Everything else that goes down is collateral. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what's going to happen likely is no no one's going to ask her about it. They're not going to ask her about it because, like you said, if she's unless says, she comes over to Fox and talks to Brett Bear or somebody over there, talks to Laura Ingram. <laughs> I doubt she will. Honestly, doubt doubt that she will. I mean, um, I I don't. Um, it's it'll be a lie, kind of by omission, if you will, because. Uh -huh. Like you said, she can't say that she, well, let's put it this way. She can say, and probably technically, that no, I didn't ask him about it. But he may have come forward about it. So technically, she's telling the truth. No, she didn't ask, but he went ahead and confessed. Or no, you know, said I did do it or didn't do it. So they're going to get into some technicalities, but the way they're probably going to deal with it is just not to ask. As a reporter and a journalist, I would say, if you didn't ask him about it, did you know about it? Have you ever heard of this? Mm -hmm. So you, oh, oh, okay. So you, you have heard about it, but you, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't ask him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, some, some questions, whether it's in public or private, a person is not going to answer unless their lawyer is there with them or unless they talk to them first. Yes. Even if it's someone supposedly on their side or in their family or whatever. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. They're going to, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Another thing that I, I saw within the last week or two was talking about Kanye West being officially qualified at that time in seven states to run for president. Like whatever you have to do to register or whatever you need to get straight with your background or get your your ducks in a row mm -hmm. that he he is qualified he's definitely he's like 42 now so he's he's old enough and everything is lining up and that that he said i don't know if he said this but it was said in the news report that i saw that he was doing this to take votes away from biden okay. so we know that he supports trump trump is running so he's not republican and uh, Biden is what well, they didn't have the Democrat convention yet where you officially get the nomination. So I guess I guess they're going to have the convention at some point, you know, uh, where, they, yeah. where they officially. Right. I, I so, guess so I what if I've been hearing? I think they are going to have it. And I saw somewhere in the news that they're even given AOC. I want to say 60 seconds and that's it. But I'm not sure where they're having it or when. They're having, yeah. but yeah, they're going to have one, I guess, to go through it formally. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But. And so, you know, that's when 
that's when he would officially get the nomination. But he's the he's a Democrat. So I'm thinking, well, if Kanye is going to try to do anything this time around, it's got to be on a different party. Because there are there are many different parties. Uh, when I voted for Harry Brown in 2000, who was an independent, there were like seven or eight then. Oh. Most of them, most of them infamous. So <laughs> he could do that. And if if he's really serious about doing that and getting into politics, you got to leave music alone and a lot of that other celebrity stuff for a long time because being a politician is a full time job. Yes. He may be able to to campaign and run, but if he gets elected, it is a full time job. Yeah, but is. but he could he could build up to that. He could build up to uh, the president is the ultimate that's the top so why not start <laughs> is what i'm thinking why not start on a local level on for the mayoral office and yeah. kanye kanye west is from chicago now i don't know him personally everything i do know about him compared to the present mayor i believe that there's no way that he can do any worse than Mayor Nincompoop <laughs> that's over there in Chicago. You heard of coonery and buffoonery? Get ready for nincompoopery. <laughs> Emphasis on the poop. Oh, my gosh. And it stinks so bad, I can smell it all the way down here in Atlanta. <laughs> and Kanye might get in there as a young black man and... They may even listen to him. They, they if, if he talks to them about violence or how we need to end this or whatever. I mean, look, whoever thought that the Bloods and the Crips would have a truce? Okay. I would have never guessed or bet that. <laughs> because they're killing each other. You can't be in a gang. Y'all killing each other unless you hate each other. But right. the heads, the heads said this is what's going to happen. And then the troops or the troopers... The, the gang members, they followed suit with it. Wow. So, and I, I'm sure that he knows that he's aware of what's going on. That would be, that would be a good thing for him to shoot for. You know, I mean, at this, at this time, who knows what Chicago is going to be and where the country is going to be in two years or four years. But for now, man, for now, they, they need, they need something better, something more there. They do. They deserve better than what they've been getting. Um, yeah. It would be interesting. And, and do, is he from Chicago? Or do they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Kanye is from Chicago. Okay. Then that he was... moved there when he was, his mother moved him there when he was like three years old. Okay. So yeah, he's basically from there. Yeah. That would be a great start. Like it's a, if he actually does want to go into politics and um, one thing that Trump has done that I, that I kind of appreciate when he was running mm -hmm. um, prior to a lot of the politicians would say, oh, and I'm being, I'm being going, I'm exaggerating here, but they would say, oh, I teach Sunday school every Sunday. I've been married to my wife for 40 years. We have a boy and a girl. We have the 2.5 kids and the dog and the, this, you know, like everything was perfect and planned, planned out. They didn't make mistakes. Everything was in a straight line, all that sort of, yeah. that sort of thing. When Trump came through, he didn't even try to pretend. I mean, right. and he's lived his life very publicly, but he uh -huh. didn't even try to pretend. And I, and I appreciate that. And what that yeah. did is gave every other candidate who wants to run, and I'm using Kanye now, the room to do that. He's like, uh, you know, you, you can be human. You've made mistakes, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't hold office, you know, or that you can't be a good statesman or politician or whatever you want to, whatever you want to be. And another, that, another point about that, that. Uh, Kanye is, is a, a rich man. He's not in the billions, I don't think, but he's, he's a very rich man. He's on, uh, you know, he came up under Jay-Z on his record label and Jay-Z uh, taught his artists how to make and how to earn their money. Okay. You know, he, he's very rich. And I'm just saying that that's one of the reasons that Trump is fearless. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, politicians, they're, they're careful and they're scared about what they say because for them to be in power, stay in power, that's their bread and butter. Mm-hmm. So Kanye, he can, he can get up there and be honest. Um, something that may hurt him, though, somebody, somebody that works with him or someone close to him said, yeah, Kanye is, is all right as long as he takes his medication every day. And it's like, you know, you're not talking about high cholesterol or uh, diabetes medication. What it's like, that's that's like saying, well, yeah, he's crazy as long, uh, you know, when he doesn't take. <laughs> when, he, yeah. He's a normal person. He's just like you and me when he takes his meds. But when he doesn't, then he says things like this over here and that over there. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I would I would have. I mean, he could make a statement about, look, I've had I've had issues with this or that, but I'm I'm managing it well and it's getting better and it shall not affect my ability to lead. To lead and <laughs> you know? Yes, it, it's true. But and the thing is, because I do believe he probably has some mental health issues because it seems like and it may have gone on before. But well, I think he admitted it. his mom passed away, that that's when everything kind of broke yes. and he was yeah. dealing with, I think, just deep deep grief so um you know it was think- after that after his mom died that he ran up on stage when uh taylor swift was getting the award yeah and he was he was dry drunk or high when he you know when he went up there yeah. you know Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if people remember, but I remember uh, when Obama was in office. He made a statement about, you know, him him being him being black and being president. Obama said the reason that Martin Luther King died was so that he could become president. <laughs> and okay. I know that I know that he doesn't mean that literally because they never knew each other. But what what he's saying is that King was about fighting for black people to rise to power in politics. I thought it was more than that, but go ahead. (laughs) Well, human rights, civil rights, and for black people and all people to have the same basic ability to go after food, clothing, shelter, living conditions, Mm -hmm. and being able to, you know, just whatever, just basic things that everybody wants about where you eat and the bathroom you use, the water fountain to sit anywhere you want to on a bus and things like that. Just, you know, for uh, for everybody. And I've heard Mexicans say that this was like on old uh, news footage that they joined in and got involved and followed King and got behind him because it was helping them as well, just being brown people being a minority. Mm -hmm. So I I just want to separate that because King was a preacher. He was not a politician. It's about helping, helping the citizens to get rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be voted in office. So people's, um, people's perception of race has changed for that to happen. I don't think that uh, a black man would have been elected as uh, as recently as 1995 no matter no matter who he was so people have changed 
in that respect. But, you know, it just, it kind of trivializes uh, why this man lost his life. And the, and the people that were involved with the movement. And even though I didn't yeah. agree with John Lewis politically and what he did after, you know, he made um, these landmark moves, but it trivialized what he did. It is, it is just, and I probably took this the wrong way, but when he said, when Obama said that he did it so I could become president, mm -hmm. what I flip back to is that when Obama made a speech, you could count the number of eyes, me, me, I, I, me, my, <laughs> my, I. I mean, in after in all, every other sentence, I'm the president. <laughs> yes. It's like in every other sentence and every other word, it was me, 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 me. And that's what I, that's the first place that I went to when you said that he made that statement. So, um, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so I can be, no, it's not about you. <laughs> it's about, yeah. you know, and, and if Obama really wanted to do or not be as egotistical, what he could have said is so little boys and girls who look like me and don't look like me would have the opportunity to be president of the free world or vice president or whatever they wanted to do. You know, that's, that would be how I would think that question, whatever question it was, would be answered. Um, I just. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a more, uh, more specific or more defined way to lay that out. Yes. Or to talk about that. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. Um, yeah. And I've been reading lately that Obama has had some, and I don't know how true it is, has had reservations saying, long story short, don't count Joe's inability to muss things up very badly <laughs> to muss things Obama up. Obama said that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, um, you know, I guess it was part of his hesitation for backing yeah. Biden so quickly. And I understand how they say, well, we're not going to back during the primary, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, you know, the guy is your vice president for eight years. And surely you can put in a good word. Just say, you know, I know there's a primary going on. Yeah, and right. Just consider this guy, you know, something to that effect. In endorse him without endorsing him. If that's like. That's like Scottie Pippen ran for president and Jordan doesn't want to endorse him, you know. Yeah. Jordan goes over to Los Angeles and said, I think Magic Johnson will be a better. Because <laughs> <laughs> listen, you know, uh, Obama still never endorsed or said anything uh, uh, about Biden until after Bloomberg dropped out of it. So that's who he was standing behind. That was his number one. That's right. That's true. He sure did. Uh -huh. He sure didn't. Um, and and just I don't remember any earth shattering kind of things that Biden did when he was vice president in terms Nothing. of, you know, making grant. Heck, he didn't make any grand moves when he was in Congress for 47 years. But as vice president, I would have thought he would have made at least one grand move. Nancy Reagan. Uh -huh. You know, the president's wife in the 80s, she did more for people and for the country than Biden as vice president with, with the with the just say no yes. to drugs campaign. Yes, she sure did. And as a case in point, we remember that to this day. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I want to say a couple quick things about about Trump. And I look at somebody's whole record, which is easy to do with Trump because he's been in there a short time. Mm -hmm. And people think it's egotistical when he says, look, I've done more in three and a half years or four years than most politicians or presidents has, has done. It's true. If you look at the track record and things that he's done. And one thing that I want to mention, you may remember a couple years ago when he had a tax cut, I believe it was 2018. Mm -hmm. And it was around March. He said it was like March, April. He said this is going to go into effect now. And, uh, you know, you'll notice a difference. We're going to work this out. I signed it in the law and within a few weeks. And I'm telling you, I know my paychecks got bigger 
Mm-hmm. Not much, but the thing is, the the more money you make, uh, of course, if there's a uh, there's a percentage of a tax cut that there's a bigger percentage that you're going to keep, which is which is uh, an uh, an incentive or inspiration to make more. Yes. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to remind people of that. And there's there's many things that that he's done that uh, I'm not not going to go into right now. But the other thing I mentioned is just how because of tax cuts and incentives and the economy being so well and doing so good that black owned businesses did increase by 400 percent. Wow. Wow. Now, you will hear people say you will hear uh, the blacks, whites. Many people say, well, Trump didn't have anything to do with that. It would have they would have increased by 400 percent anyway. The reason they're saying that is because when you hate someone, you can never give them a compliment Mm -hmm. or praise them for something that they've done. It's impossible to give somebody credit for something when you hate them, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the reason they're that's the reason they're saying that they don't want to believe or accept you know yes they don't and that's a shame that's a shame just you don't have to like the person but if they right. if they give credit where credit's due i mean <laughs> it's, they did it <laughs> it's no skin off your nose to admit what people know is already a fact i may not like cats but if i have a problem with mice running around my yard i might get a couple of them and put them in the yard to take care of all the mice and to bounce <laughs> them out of there Exactly. Even if, even if I hate cats, <laughs> right. you're, you're, you're doing a you're doing a good job. You want some meow mix? You want some milk? Is there anything I can give you? <laughs> you're doing a good job. What do you need to keep going? You know. But um, but you're right. It, it's it's about results. It is about results. And yeah. um, and I think what we've come and I want to say in general as Americans. We're charmed by the talk, but we don't care as much about the results. Yeah. Um, case in point, you know, oh, not Obama. Trump is getting the results, and now he's he's a little sharp tongue, and he will come back at people, and people are complaining, and I say complaining, but I really mean whining sometimes about um, about how he's doing, what he's saying, that sort of thing. Well, you got to trade one for the other. And in, in, in his case, you do. So um, he's getting the results that you want. Yeah. Then set aside kind of all this other stuff because when it ma- when it comes down to it, in the end, what's going to stand is what he actually did. So yeah, um, history will show. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it will. So um, you know, I I don't mind the tweeting. I don't mind any of that. And if you read his book, Art of the Deal. This is his thing. I mean, he makes deals. He cuts deals. This is how he does it. I mean, this is him. <laughs> it's just, right, right. You know, and this is a business deal, just like all the other thousands of business deals he's handled. And, and it works, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. He, um, he, he doesn't intimidate people. When he did business yeah. deals with other businesses, he put himself in their shoes and made them offers or thinking, what can I do to make this a sweet, tasty deal for you? What can, you know, what can I uh, offer or give up to make, uh, to make it a good compromise or to make you want to get involved and, uh, you know, get involved in this business or, or do business with me at this, you know, this particular thing? Yes, he did. He did exactly. He did, and and it's it's admirable. I mean, and that's how it gets. It's it's admirable. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, let's see. Anything else you got for us? Well, um, the last thing I wanted to mention today. This is just just something for everybody around the country, and we're dealing with quarantine on some level and social distancing and. Just having having less social time and more time to 
ourselves or alone or just, you know, away from uh, sporting events. Mm-hmm. Right. I know guys who uh, sports are the center of their life. They spend usually eight, 10 hours a week on the average watching sports. And there's there's very little or none of that now. And some people have gotten down. And I know that uh, like alcoholism is going up and depression. And I, I just want to say or remind people, you have to laugh. And a good way that, to do that is to watch comedies. And I remember the story about a woman who had cancer and it got so bad she stopped working and she was just at home all the time. And so she started renting. Back then it was, you know, Blockbuster <laughs> and then going to the video store. But she started renting like three comedies a week and the cancer went away or receded. I mean, there was no trace of it. And so uh, when you laugh, there's a chemical that's released in the bloodstream that helps you to live longer. Mm-hmm. Right. And when I heard that, it made me think about uh, a verse in the Bible says a cheerful heart do with good medicine. I mean, that's that's almost the exact same thing. Like being cheerful or laughing is is healthy for you and can add life to you. So mm-hmm. like. You have to you have to make sure that you get that in. I want to laugh at least once every day, but mm-hmm. we we know we know that it, it is it is actually physically good for you. Definitely, definitely find some things and not take things so seriously. Oh my goodness, it's yeah. not the end of the world. It's not you know the world's not going to stop spinning. You know, take a deep breath. It's just one thing. You know, things keep going forward. Yeah, Trump makes me laugh. You know, <laughs> things things that that he said. Uh, so, so, you know, you you can't you can't take it you can't take it too seriously. Uh, life life is funny. Sometimes tragedy is funny, mm-hmm. or the way things happen, the way things go down. Exactly. And like I said, be, be, it's okay to smile. It's okay to laugh. It's go seek it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go seek it out. Right. Well, do you have, what do you have for us next time? How I believe people will react after the election, okay. how citizens will react, whether it's uh, Trump or Biden. Okay. Great. Well, we'll look forward to it. Um, any final thoughts? Um, Hey, take care of yourself and make sure that you click on subscribe and support this podcast. I just I appreciate everyone and their their time and attention to Brutally Honest. Awesome. And with that, leave a review for us wherever you listen to this podcast. And if there is a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out to us at Brute Honest Radio at gmail.com. That's B R U T honest radio at gmail.com and we will talk to you next time have a great week take care